What's up everybody, Stone from Stick on the Ice here, and welcome back to another episode of Wheel of Franchise. If you missed episode 1, I'm going to have it linked down below in the description. But a quick summary of it, we sucked last season. We ended up finishing with the 4th overall pick, which I ended up trading to get the 2nd overall pick where we got Shane Wright. And as the wheel is spinning, I want you guys to comment down below some challenges I can add to the wheel. So as the spin finishes here, we're going to be challenged with getting a 90 overall defenseman. So we got a few 90 overall defensemen I can choose from, but I'm going to be going for John Carlson. And the reason for that is, he has the lowest trade value, so it'll probably be the easiest. So I've sent Washington a ton of offers, but I can't get Carlson with what we got. So I'm going to trade Philip Deneau to Buffalo for 2 seconds, and then I'm going to combine those seconds in a package. But that's still not going to be enough, so we have to change everything up. I'm going to send a first rounder and 2 seconds to Ottawa for Tim Stutzel. Ottawa's going to accept that deal, and now it's time to flip Stutzel. So I'm going to send Stutzel and 2 seconds to Washington for John Carlson, and they're accepting the deal. Now that we got John Carlson, there's a few more trades I want to make. I'm going to trade Paul Stasny for a second, a third in Reeves, and then a fourth for Jason Spezza. And I'm also going to trade Martin Nook in a sixth for a fourth line left winger. So looking at this team, our forwards are definitely much better than last season, and the defense has the potential to be absolutely amazing. And the goaltending i'm not too concerned with it and before we jump into this season i'm going to sign connor timmons to a 3.2 million dollar per year deal for four years so i'm going to go ahead and simulate 10 games and we'll see how this team's doing so while i was simming those 10 games i got offered a trade i couldn't refuse two seconds for rodriguez and a third the reason i'm taking this is because rodriguez is a third liner for us so two seconds is definitely worth it so through the first 10 games we're five and five and a bit of a disappointment i was expecting a bit more from this team so now i'm going to go ahead and simulate to the 25 game mark and hopefully this team can step it up and during that time we would be offered one trade that i'm accepting two second rounders for ryan Pollock. so basically i just turned evan rodriguez and a third into ryan Pollock. that was definitely worth it so over the next 15 games, we went 7-7-1. I'm a bit disappointed, but I know this team could take the next step when it matters most. Now I'm going to simulate to the 50 game mark. We'll see how this team's doing and how all the players are doing. So through 50 games, we're 27, 20, and 3. We're 3rd in the Central Division and 11th in the entire league. Joe Pavelski is currently leading the team with 11 goals and 33 assists for 44 points. Nick Schmaltz is coming in 2nd with 14 goals and 28 assists for 42 points. And Andrew Kopp's going to round out the top 3 with 15 goals and 26 assists for 41 points points. Keith Yandel's leading all defensemen in points with 8 goals and 27 assists for 35 points and Darcy Kemper's picking up 21 wins with a 920 save percentage and a 248 goals against. So now I'm going to simulate to the trade deadline and honestly I'm thinking of selling because we got a few guys on one year deals that I don't plan on bringing back next season. So over the next 14 games this team was definitely better with an 8-5-1 record but I know a few trades need to be made for next season. So I'm going to acquire Yamamoto for a third and a seventh. And Yamamoto is not going to be the only young player I acquire. because so I'm going to trade Joe Pavelski and a third for Philip Heedle. And there's going to be one more move I make as I'm going to trade Keith Yandel for Nolan Patrick and a third. So obviously looking at this team, we're not looking as good without Pavelski and Yandel. But I'm not too worried about this season because I don't think we could truly compete. But we will be able to next season. And before I simulate to the end of the season, I got to extend some contracts. Nolan Patrick, you're going to get $2.75 million per year for three years. Hayden, you're going to get $2 million per year for four years. And Philip Hedl, you're going to get $4.6 million per year for four years. So now I'm going to simulate to the end of the season, and hopefully this team can stay in a playoff spot. To my surprise, after trading Pavelski and Yandel, this team still did pretty good. We finished 3rd in the Central and ninth in the entire league. Nick Schmaltz is leading the entire team in points with 24 goals and 46 assists for 70 points. Andrew Kopp's coming in 2nd with 26 goals and 39 assists for 65 points. And Shane Wright's going to round out the top 3 with 18 goals and 36 assists for 54 points. John Carlson's leading all defensemen in points with 12 goals and 42 helpers for 54 points. And Darcy Kemper's going to pick up 35 wins with a 9-11 save percentage and a 278 goals against. Leon Drysdale's going to lead the entire league in points with 35 goals and 72 helpers for 107 points. McDavid's coming in 2nd not too far behind with 52 goals and 54 helpers for 106 points and Alex Dabrinkat's going to round out the top three with 36 goals and 66 helpers for 102 points. Chris Letang's going to lead all defensemen in points with 18 goals and 56 helpers for 74 points, and John Gibson's going to lead the league in wins with 48 while having a 915 save percentage and a 246 goals against. So taking a look at the playoffs, the Arizona Coyotes are going to be taking on the Chicago Blackhawks in round number one. 
Game one was pure domination from Chicago and we didn't have a chance. But in game two, Hayton would score a big third period goal which would tie the series up. Game three is going to end with an OT winner from Philip Hedo, which is putting Arizona up two games to one, but Chicago is going to even that series in the next game with a 3-1 win. A Nolan Patrick Hattrick would put Chicago on the brink of elimination in game five, but five unanswered from Chicago is going to force a game seven, and in game seven, Chicago is going to take us down. When the playoffs came to an end, Tampa would go on to win the cup, and the LA Kings, they're not winning the cup, but they're going to be winning the lottery, so they're going to get the chance to draft Connor Bernard. So entering the draft, I'm honestly not expecting too much here. We have the 23rd overall pick, so we're not going to get really anyone notable that we're going to be able to use here. Bedard dropped to number two. Yeah, let's make a move here. So I'm going to trade the 23rd overall pick, the 43rd overall pick, and two prospects for the second overall pick, which is going to be Connor Bedard. Yeah, we're making moves here. So outside Bedard, the only other notable prospect was an elite low potential left winger. So entering the re-sign phase, there's a few guys that need to be signed. And of course, I'm going to sign all the notable rookies, and then I'm going to give Yamamoto a 2 $2.75 million per year deal for three years. In free agency, we're giving out two massive contracts. Nathan McKinnon, $12.5 million per year for seven years, and David Pasternak, $12.2 million per year for six years. And we gotta free up some cap space, so I'm gonna trade Dustin Brown for a third and a fourth. So we struck out on both players. Yeah, that's a tough one. I don't really know what else to say. So now we're going to have to settle with Bo Horvat for $6.35 million per year for four years and Ryan O'Reilly for $8.65 million per year for four years. Both guys are going to sign and this team's looking a lot better. 